Now, do you have that 500,000 somewhere and you're like, hmm, I want to invest it, but I don't know what the best package to go for or what the best thing that I can be able to do with this and invest it in a brilliant way. Now, this is that video that you're looking for. This video shows you exactly how to invest that 500,000 in a brilliant way. But before I even say anything, listen, what happens the, the route to follow or what to invest on is guided by your goal. By the way, the hardest question you can ever ask somebody, be it your financial advisor, and I always just encourage people, always contact your financial advisor to advise you on where and how to go ahead and invest. What I'm sharing here are all my views. What you're supposed to understand is this. First of all, define your goal. Where do you want to be at what particular period of time? Then if that where you want to be or your destination requires to have an X amount of money, then come to the present day ask yourself how much am i able to save for me to or how much am i able to save compare that with how am i supposed to, or how much am i supposed to save for me to acquire or achieve that specific goal this information i'm sharing with you if you have 500,000, you can be able to do it but now they don't forget this don't leave me uh, nothing like a comment make sure that you leave a comment make sure that you subscribe and leave me a comment on the comment section all right let's go to the end point here we have 500,000 and we want to invest this money because obviously we know we need to invest for the money to give birth to more babies, passive income as we progress to the next level. All right. Now, what do we do in a period of one to three <clears throat> years for us to achieve that? Now, here we go. The very first thing that you're supposed to do, even before investing in anything, you're supposed to set aside what you call the emergency fund. Why? Emergency fund is usually a cautioning. It's, you know, the first layer that you put is like a cautioning. It's not even like it's a cautioning, actually. It's that layer that you put. Just in case BS happens out there, you always have a soft landing. Okay, let me just say it again. Before embarking on investments, you must have the emergency fund first. If you have a family, they have to eat, drink, pay the rent, pay the bills, pay all those kind of things, pay their school, and all those kind of things. So you must take care of that first because it is crucial, it's necessary. There's no way you cannot come and explain to your family like, hey, guess what? I had two million I wasted, so I went to invest there for me to get money now. That's why we cannot pay your Doesn't make sense. So what you do is to cushion for that eventuality first. Put some cash into a money market fund. Now, Money market fund here in the K in the sense that this I always tell people instead of having that emergency fund in your bank in a current account lying idle, money market fund is that logical thing that you can have as an investment. Okay, now take maybe I can take any random number. Depends with your emergency fund. If it's seventy thousand, put seven. If it's a hundred thousand, put hundred thousand in a money market fund. I'm going with fifty thousand just as an example. Take your money market. See, how much do you tell how much you should put in a money, I mean, in, in an emergency fund is actually, you know, a run against how much you spend in a month. If you spend 20,000, you're supposed to have at least three month coverage. So take the 20,000 for month one, month two, and month three. So that is 60,000. Put it in an emergency fund, in a money market fund. Why? That money is actually earning interest too. You can be able to withdraw it, that money at any given moment. So first of all, create an emergency fund, put it in a money market fund. Because that is not only a money market, it is not only an emergency fund, but it's an investment. Okay. Now, after we are through with that, obviously, we deduct that from our money. We are left with 450,000. Now, we go to the next level. Okay. Remember, we are creating a portfolio of investment. And a portfolio is a basket that is composed of different things. High risk, medium risk, and low risk. Okay. Now, other fraction of the money, we can put it into stocks or shares however you call them. You can take a chunk of 200 Gs or 200,000 and put that into a money market fund or put or you can take 150,000, put that into stocks or shares, okay? Now, this is what happens when you're buying shares, okay? Shares are actually classified into three. Shares, we have the shares that we call them the penny shares. Penny shares, these are simply shares that do not cost a lot of money to buy. Okay, these are shares, for example, if you come, uh, if you're watching this from Kenya, to buy shares for the KPLC, the Kengen, um, you know, and some other companies out there, it costs you like two shillings, three shillings, four shillings, and something also. Does not require maybe below five shillings. It means that if you are to buy a minimum of 100 shares with that uh, company, you need less than even uh, 300 Kenyan 
and shillings for you to buy shares of that given company. And that's why we always encourage you, buy shares. Do not cost a lot. Do not cost a lot. With as little as 500 shillings, 300, 200 shillings, you can actually be able to buy shares. So you buy the penny shares. Penny shares, those are shares that do not require a huge chunk of cash. Let me just frame it that way in a layman's language. We have other technical terms to define it, but I don't want to buy those technical terms. Now, those shares, they tend to fluctuate in a way that you find these shares, they can actually jump from 1.7 shillings to boom, to 3 shillings, to 2.5, to 2 shillings, to what? There is that high chances of those shares to actually sort of fluctuate because there's something called the 52-week range when you're determining what shares to buy. And I said this is simply an indication of how these shares are actually fluctuating in terms of the price per share, you know, from 2 shillings to 5 shillings to 10 shillings to whatever the shilling. So they fluctuate in between. So those are all that is a factor to consider. Now, you buy uh, 20,000 worth of penny shares. And and then you can go again and buy shares of a different class. We call them the growth shares, okay? The growth shares, this is simply those shares that you find they are quite stable. They are shares that you find or they are companies that are not fluctuating at a high rate. They are shares that do not require or buy with them with a lot of money anyway, but they are shares that you find them in a moderate way. Their 52-week range does not fluctuate beyond four shilling or something. This is where you ensure that your money is stable and safe and secured and thereabout, okay? So this is where even if you, for example, if you go and pick a company X, let's say this company X, uh, let's say company X share maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe let's say this, the shares fluctuates from 31 shillings all the way to 34 shillings and when you check this company this is uh, according to the 52 week range 52 week range this is where you find for a whole year shares actually fluctuate in between there they can move from 31 shilling to 34 from 34 to 31 so you are in between so the differentiation um, uh, this is how I argue uh, if the shares can move from 34 shillings to 31 shillings obviously I have lost 3 shillings Okay, therefore, <clears throat> it means that uh, I have also to check to check what we call the percentage yield in terms of the returns. Maybe the percentage yield of this company is around 14, 13, 12 percent or thereabout. If that percentage yield is able to cater for the differentiation in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the deduction of the price per share, then I'm safe. My money is actually there. For that case, you can actually go ahead and put your 80,000 out there. Okay, so if you decide to liquidate, and these are the companies that if you were to sell them, it does not require like a huge process and what have you. The other set of companies that you can as well buy shares for are called dividend shares. This is where you put a little bit of huge chunk of 100,000 approximately there about. This is that money that, uh, you know, earns you dividend. Because by the way, if you didn't know, there are shares that do not give dividends. You know, there are dividend shares and there are shares that you just buy, rely on the capital gain, you can resell them in later, okay? So not all shares <clears throat> are actually dividend-based shares. So it's always good to make sure that you consult or contact your broker um, to, to, to know which shares you're actually buying. So this is simply where you rely on you getting something at the end of, uh, I don't know, maybe it can be interim dividends, that is after six months, and then the end of the year, or end of the physical year, dividends, okay? <clears throat> so it is good to consider that specific thing. Now, guess what happens now? Remember, we started having a money market fund. We now have stocks, but not just stocks, but we have three classes of stocks. We have the penny stocks, we have the growth stocks, and we have what we call the dividend stocks. So in that case, regard then you're covered in three ways okay now we go to the last section of the last bit of what you're supposed to invest on we together now what you're supposed to invest on again is the areas of the bills and bonds <clears throat> why these are called securities and securities are regarded as the safest ways of investing your money. Losing your money is close to negligible. I did not say you cannot, but losing your money is close to negligible. In Kenya, we've never gotten any, or we've never had any case of such eventuality. So securities, they do not really assure you that liquidity, but you become liquid in phases. I mean, you become liquid at time to come, okay? Now, on this case regard, you set aside a whooping 250K, 250K towards these or these investments. Estimates. And you can decide, hey, you're going to go the bills way, you can go the bonds way. The question is, for how long do you want to fix this money? For example, if you want to go the three years time, obviously bills do not go beyond one year. That's for sure. So what happens is that you can pick, you invest this into a, bowl, a bill. Um, let's say a bill is giving you 16.8%. Obviously, this is pre-tax, post-tax is around 14.5%, thereabout. So you take your 250K, you can pump it into that bill. 
or you can decide to differentiate this money because you need a minimum of 100,000 to invest on treasury bills in Kenya. 100,000 Kenyan shilling. That's like $1,000 to invest on the bills in Kenya. Okay? So you take like 100 Gs, put it in a bill, yeah, and remain with 150K, you can put it in a bond. Bond, you can choose that bond that goes for three years so that at least you don't go beyond that what we discussed because, hey, we are guided by one year to three years. Okay? But remember one thing. Bonds, they pay semi-annually. They pay their coupon or the interest semi-annually, meaning after every six months. So if you go for the three years one, you're going to get what we call six times. You're going to be paid six times. And the sixth time, you're going to not only get your interest, but also you're going to get back your face value. The face value simply means you're going to get back your principal amount that you had invested. So if you don't want to wait for three years without you having your money, you can always choose the bills way. And the bills way, you can decide to again choose our uh, bills. We have three classes of bills. We have the 91 days, we have 182 days, and we have 364 days. It depends. If you want to take that money, maybe you can <clears throat> take 150k, put it in a and the, 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 the um, three months day, uh, three months period in a, in, a, in a bill and put maybe another 100,000 into 182 days and then with that case regard so that you know each and every three months i am actually liquid each and every three months i'm actually liquid there are people who don't want to put their money far from where they are there are people who be like hmm, i don't think i can be able to invest for a whole stretch of the year how about i go for three months after three months my money is back i get my coupon i put another money my money is back i get another coupon so you can actually use that route to achieve that specific goal now if you can actually listen what I'm talking about, I've actually differentiated all those areas. Again, they have an individual who will be like, hmm, you know what, Joseph, I don't want to pick stocks. My stocks, I don't want to put all this amount of money. I can decide. I take only 80,000. I differentiate that 80,000 into the three stocks. I take the rest of the money because I'm not so sure about these shares because they have high volatility. I channel back that money towards an MMF. You can pick two MMF. You can pick one MMF for your emergency fund. And then let's say you invest 80,000 on these stocks, you remain here with, because we had dedicated 200, you remain with 120,000, you put it in a money market fund. At least each and every month, there is something that's coming in because money market fund keeps you liquid each and every day. You can withdraw that money at any given moment. And then you have something that is actually growing on your dividend share. Maybe you can decide this 80, you can pick two shares. You can pick the dividend and the growth shares with that case regard. And then you have that for the dividend and the growth. You have something to money market funds here. And then you have other things into the bills or the bonds. And you have that composition of different things. And with that case regard, we say you actually have a basket of investment. And that is exactly how you create a portfolio. And remember thing, this portfolio that you're creating it is because you want it to take you to a certain destination maybe if your destination is by the end of three years you want to have accumulated maybe say another 50,000 out of this 500,000 therefore or 100,000 whichever the target it is eh, and you've already considered that indeed that will actually help you to reach that 600,000 then you can liquidate the shares if you have you can withdraw from the money market that you have and of course the bills on the bonds that you should be having should be maturing at that particular period of time then you can get your chunk maybe go buy a property if that was your goal or maybe build if that was your goal or go start a business if that was your goal remember one thing <clears throat> and this is a disclaimer at all the time consider consulting your financial advisor so that they can direct you on what exactly you can be able to pick because you don't invest just people are investing you invest because you're guided by the goal of yourself that's good just of speaking and if you'd like to get a hold of me, have a discussion with me, my number is always on the description of this specific video. You can grab it, shoot me a call or text, we can have a discussion. If you'd like to know how to invest on all these areas, what are bills, what are bonds, and I do have booklets, and they are ebooks. Copy goes for only 280 bob, and you can get a copy, invest by yourself, and you get started. For now, so goodbye and see you in the next time.